Okay, everything's cleaned up. I put a little lube around that O-ring so it slides get a little easier. Went over everything, like you've seen, once, twice, three times. Make sure it's good, because once you get this top on, whatever it is, it is, or you gotta take it back apart, so. Double check it, triple check it, whatever you gotta do until you feel comfortable. Upper plenum gasket set will come with two new O-rings for those fuel lines. I don't know if you can see them back there, but you got the two new O-rings installed already since it's easier to get to. The new seal is on the plenum and we're ready to install it. Seals in. Feels good. Just give this a little wiggle as you're pushing down on the intake. And it should seat all the way down for you, just like so. As you tighten it down and it pulls down, it should seat that the rest of the way in. As you see, we're back on. So now we start reinstalling our fasteners. Okay, now we got all the retaining bolts in place. I ran them down snug with a ratchet. Now we're gonna torque them. Pretty much put them back in the same order. If you recall, this valve went in first and then the studs on top of it, retaining bolts. It's pretty much the only oddball that's torquing the specs. The first pass goes 44, second pass 88. First pass 44, second pass 88. I already torqued these down. You want to get yourself a, a good pattern. I work from the inside out because I have this O ring that has to finish compressing in. So I usually start here, here, start crossing, and just work my way out to the ends. But I have them all torqued down. I'm just going to hit them one more time just to make sure I got them all. Got torque set to 88. Figured I'd save you the agony of watch me reinstall everything. So I got everything plugged back in, everything remounted. You just want to go over it real quick with you, but you just want to reverse everything you did, taking it apart. Because you see your uh, your throttle bracket and your cruise control bracket went on this front stud. You had a nut and you had your bolt here. You want to tighten that down. This here went on to that stud. Tighten that nut down. Remember before that sensor went underneath the studs. You had the bracket back here for your wire loom that we bent back previously. I just bent that back around where it belonged and installed the retaining nuts. If you can see it down there. Tighten them down. The fuel line, pop the front end, leave everything loose until you get the back two lines started, the supply and return line. Start it by a couple threads, then install the retaining bolt. Tighten that retaining bolt first, then tighten the fuel line hold down bracket. Remember this is a, a bracket with two nuts. You want to put that on, make sure these are nice and tight. Make sure you tighten the fuel rail hold down bolt, and then you can tighten the fuel lines that you put the new o-rings on get them nice and tight it's a 5 8 and a 3 quarter inch wrench reinstall the spark plug wires the brake booster vacuum line that turns to one side you push down and twist it in place lock that in place PCV valve you want to install that pretty much comes up goes in here then you have this vacuum line that runs across Clips on to your PCV line, runs around to the sensor, uh, your coil wire. All the wiring pretty much falls in place. You got your coil, and your module, and all your other sensors, your TPS, your idle air. Okay guys, before putting this duct assembly on, 
Check this O-ring. That's a common spot for unmetered air. If you're running lean, I've had those O-rings fail right there if they're taken on and off. Sometimes they roll over, sometimes they get pinched. From the heat, they dry out. So if you need to replace that, that O-ring, do so now while you got it apart. You got this breather line. Goes down in there. Prior to starting it, I'm just going to turn the key on and make sure we don't have any leaks down around the fuel lines. Keep nice and dry. Okay guys, I don't see any leaks. Okay, I got it hooked back up to the Auto Ingenuity Scan tool. I'm going to go with the Enhanced Powertrain this time because there's a few other things I would like to monitor on this vehicle. Now one thing I want to know here guys, this is the next day. I had to wait for the parts as you know. So we got the vehicle back together. The engine's cold. So everything should be at the same temperature. I'm going to pull all the, all the codes in this. This may take a little bit. What I like to monitor is to see if all the temperature sensors are reading correctly. When the engine's totally cold, like when you come out in the morning, if you hook your scan tool up, your intake air temperature should match pretty close to your coolant, your engine coolant temperature sensor. The engine coolant temperature sensor on this one is pretty critical when it comes to the fuel injection system because that's what determines when the engine's cold and when the engine's hot. I'm going to pull up the live data meter and um, we're going to start with the engine coolant temperature and I want to compare that to the intake air temperature and as you can see we're reading the same temp so that verifies that the two temperature sensors are reading correctly and it's at room temperature okay I brought up a little different graph hopefully this one's a little easier to read but as you can see already, we pretty much have a confirmed fix. You want to see your fuel trim, your short-term fuel trim numbers around zero, fluctuating somewhere around there. And as you can see, short-term fuel trim bank one, you know, she's hanging right around zero, plus or minus. As you see, the temperature's slowly climbing. Nice airflow, we're just idling here at 677 RPMs, our cam retard. Like I mentioned, I know that sounds horrible, but um, you want to see this zero plus or minus two degrees. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. That's enough talking. Let's set the cam retard. <laughs> so now I want to get this cam retard down around zero plus or minus two that's actually within tolerance you would be fine when you set these up you want to bring it above a thousand rpms because this isn't accurate under a thousand rpms so i'll demonstrate how i set the timing on these if you have the distributor out and you have access to a, a meter like this so i'm going to bring this up above a thousand rpms and try to get that close to zero one more thing and how you could use this to pinpoint even a small vacuum leak because take notice how right now our fuel trims are staying right around zero this vehicle is running pretty good at this point now I'm going to come over here all I'm going to do is remove the oil cap and look at our fuel trim numbers now guys She's 
adding fuel because it just picked up that lean condition with the O2 sensors. With that vacuum leak, it picked up a, a lean condition and it's adding fuel to compensate for it. Okay, I'm gonna do the same sensor response test on bank two. So the red is bank two, O2, and the blue is short-term fuel trim. Oil cap's coming off now. They should be seeing that sensor go lean. Sensor's going lean, fuel trim's climbing, adding fuel, changing the pulse width. Now you're seeing your O2 starting to stabilize, trying to maintain that 450 millivolts. You look over here, guys, this is your, your voltage scale, 0.4 is 400 millivolts, so we're trying to maintain around 450 millivolts. And the fuel trim is making that fluctuation. So, okay, now the cap's going back on. Just see the O2 go rich. Fuel trim starting to pull down, leaning it out. Nice to see your O2 stabilized.